Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So we've already gone over the news and everything's going swimmingly decent, I guess, or just middle of the road. Uh, we talked about how the Federal Reserve came out and said that, hey, everything's strong and everything's good, but we're still going to keep printing money and we're going to keep inflation, uh, you know, pretty low as much as we can. Uh, we talked about uh, Cardano and their their African conference that is going on and also about Nexo, uh, that billion dollar company that just picked up uh I think like $100 million worth of Bitcoin. It was a lot. Check that video out before. But I, I, I touched on this article briefly about Voyager uh, and Voyager and their 18,000% revenue growth and what they're going to do with debit cards, offering a debit card, which will be linked right to the US, right, right to your account for USDC. And you can you can gain 9%. And then it's just whatever you have in USDC, which is a stable coin, uh, you can just spend that. And uh, to me personally, I'm like, I don't know why I'm going to keep my, I'm not going to keep my bank if they can do that for me. So let's just go over this article. And before we start, I've had some, we all know, well, if you if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're old, you know that I've been, I was a, a big advocate of Voyager in the very beginning, early, 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 uh, bef like when they had like 50,000, 30,000 uh, people signed up. And then everything was going well, and then they just got a big influx of people, massive, uh, after that GameStop incident, and people were looking to trade crypto, and they just are going through growing pains. And during that time, I received so many emails about things that were going on uh, with with Voyager about, hey, they can't process this transaction, or hey, you know, I everything's stuck over there, or hey, I lost this, or hey, I, I, I put in a customer support ticket, and it's been like two, three weeks or four weeks, or whatever it is, else it is. And because of that, I, I had Steve on the show and he explained, I'm like, hey, he's like, look, it's growing pains. I mean, we went from like 30, 40,000 to over a million in like a week. So, uh, you know, let us catch up. Give me 120 days. And that 120 days is coming up, uh, middle May. And um, so far, I've seen uh, a drastic reduction in the emails and direct messages and everything else that I've gotten about Voyager. Now it's other stuff. You know, it's other stuff that people are complaining about. But uh, it just helps me gauge about what's going on. And I'm feeling pretty good. I have this handy dandy, let me show you, uh, exchange of wallet fees. There's a link in the description, you can check it out. And Voyager was my number one recommendation. It was, but I said, I can't recommend it right now. I can't recommend it right now because uh, there's just some issues, you know, like, we, like I just talked about. But as time goes on, and I think it's going to happen soon. I'm going to switch it back on and say, I do recommend it. And this is the thing, because on this channel, I mean, the reason why you watch it is because you don't want me to lie and uh, give you a bunch of BS stuff. I mean, I can lie to you all day. You know, there's, if you want to, if you want to hear some lies, there's tons of, <laughs> there's tons of YouTube channels out there that uh, you, you can, you can listen to and uh, whatever. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, I think the reason is because I give you my best information I possibly can. And I try to be as open as I possibly can. And, and uh, if there's a problem, I, I tell you there's a problem. If it's great, I tell you it's awesome. It's great and you gotta get into it or you know, try it out. But on this one, these are what was, it was my favorite and it hurt me to say it, but I had to do it. And here we are, so. But I will tell you the times, they are a changing. So let's break in this article. First of all, uh, this is a great article by Derek Teed. Derek, let me see if I can find the information on this as I, yeah, this might look a little funny, but Derek is a labor market research analyst for the Bureau of Labor Statistics, University of Minnesota. Good friend. But uh, I was like, it was kind of like, ah, Department of Labor Statistics. So this ought to be interesting. This was a pretty comprehensive um, article. Uh, very good, everything else. Actually, let me, let me refresh this so I can get the, there we go. Okay, refreshed. So let's start it off. So one year ago, and this is what I was talking about, Voyager had between 10 and 40,000 funded accounts. And then as of March 31st, they had over 270,000 funded accounts and over 1 million verified users. And that took place in like uh, this, the time span of like a week uh, during that whole GameStop uh, fiasco uh, over there on uh, Robinhood. So this is what I, I like because it compares Coinbase versus Voyager. If you've used Coinbase like I have, and maybe you have as well, super easy to use, right? Coinbase is super easy. And I used to give it a bunch of grief because, I mean, the customer service is awful, still awful. 
I mean, you know, try getting hold of anybody over there. And then uh, the fees were kind of crazy. And that's why I liked Voyager. So this guy said, well, both are easy, so let me compare the costs. And it's it's not earth shedding for anybody, but uh, he says it's cheaper to buy cryptos on Voyager after you account for the spread and fees on both Voyager and Coinbase. And he talks about how, you know, he, he actually went in there and did a bunch of different pairs. And he said the price are usually 99% similar, but there was a 3% Coinbase fee on a $100 transaction, one and a half on a thousand and 1.5 on 10,000. So of course those fees really add up, especially if you're dollar cost averaging like I do. But this was the big one, Coinbase Pro versus Voyager. Cause I got a lot of people say, ah, oh, but you know, all you gotta do is Coinbase Pro. Well, first of all, I find it very uh, complex. And I know some people are like, you're an idiot, true. But uh, when, they, when they say that, uh, you know what, uh, it's it's super easy or it's 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 not as complex as you think. I guess I play around with it, but for the average person coming in, you want it to be super simple. People don't want to screw around. They just want like someone like, where do I buy? Push button, button push, buy and I bought it. And that's it. So like when people go, well, you just get in Coinbase Pro. Your goals are not their goals. My goals aren't your goals. So uh, simplicity will win every time. That's my two cents. Anyhow, Coinbase Pro, more complicated. And then it talks about fees. Coinbase Pro fees on transactions up to $10,000 are only 0.5%, which is pretty darn good, pretty hard to beat. Sometimes Voyager is barely better, and sometimes Coinbase Pro is barely better, but negligible. I found that, and this is all the pairs that he, that he, that he talks about, the advantage was between 0.1 and 0.45. And with the other cryptos, the advantage got up to 1% better price on Coinbase Pro. So if you want to save some fees, go to Coinbase Pro and just try that out and do it all. But I mean, for the mass influx of people that we're going to get uh, this year, moving on, uh, I think Coinbase is a, is, a, is probably what they're going to use. And most, most importantly, I think if you just want to like, you know, spare yourself some costs just get voyager and they got a lot more tokens so i don't understand the problem just do that all right but this is the big thing interest can you get interest on uh on uh coinbase i think you can do it on gemini uh yeah and i and i i think you can you can stake on coinbase with tezos and i think it's another one another couple of ones but as far as like interest hey you know what uh, Coinbase is offering, oh no, I get to the back. Coinbase is offering 0.15% on USDC, awful. 2% on DAI, 4% on Tezos, and 6% on Algo, 5% on Adam. That's okay, so that's pretty good. But then you take a look at Voyager, well, why wouldn't this do that? Seems like it's a pretty good one. Again, maybe people just don't want to move it around or whatever, but you got a pretty good interest rates for here. Although Tezos uh, is actually lacking. Look at that, 2% for XTZ. And then on Coinbase, it is uh, 4.6. It seems kind of high. I don't know. But sure, okay. We'll go with that. And then it says, no, actually, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. If you are a larger retail investor or a small institution, it might be uh, best to buy large crypto orders above 10,000 on Coinbase Pro and transfer the cryptos to Voyager to gain interest, which makes sense, right? If you want to just you know, pump it up like 3 or 4%, just if you're like, I love Coinbase Pro, I like it complex, or I'm used to it now, Buy it over there, transfer it to Voyager. Everything's good if you want to do that. That's up to you. Don't take my advice, not a financial advice. Voyager has roughly 200 million in cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet. Because remember, Voyager is a publicly traded company. Well, Coinbase is now, uh, but Voyager is a brokerage. It's not an exchange. It uh, takes a look. It goes through all the different exchanges and tries to find you the best rate. And then for the spread, they pocket a little bit of the money and they pass the other savings on to you. I know some people say that's BS. Well, pfft, this is what I got for this article, and also I've done it myself. So on some days, yes, you will probably get a better inch uh, rate uh, over on Coinbase Pro or, or a little bit on Coinbase. And some days you're gonna get a better one on uh, on Voyager. So. If you wanna keep going back and forth and back and forth, be my guest, knock yourself out, I don't care. But look, I got a lot of things going on. I'm busy, ah, I could, I'm busy enough to not give a damn about 0.5% or 1%. There you go, I said it. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. so Voyager only loans out their cryptos to strong companies with strong balance sheets like Gallia Digital, Jump Capital and Bitco. And that's of course how they get their interest because once you put uh, your cryptos on there, they loan them out. And then these companies do a couple of different things. They could they could short it 
uh, whatever, or they could become, uh, it's an arbitrage opportunity or they're, or they're market making. Uh, one of those three is usually how these big companies uh, make money as borrowing cryptocurrencies. Anyhow, the crypto market cap, market crash in 2020, March 2020, when Bitcoin fell 35% in one day, had no effect on these types of loans. And this was actually on top of Celsius, they did the same thing. In March 2020, when everything just huge dive, which 35%, eh, it's kind of, kind of, kind of big, I, I guess. Um, but yeah, they they didn't have to liquidate anybody. Well, no, it's not true. Celsius had to liquidate a few people. They said I think it was up like seven seven people, but it was like out of their hundreds or thousands of loans, they, they didn't have to liquidate anybody because they just asked people to to collateralize because it dropped so much. And with Voyager, but they were you know they were smaller back then. They didn't have an issue with it because they loaned it out to these bigger players. So sure. And then Voyager gives back about a hundred percent of the interest that they earn to the customers because Voyager is uh content with the revenues they're going to spread so that's why you get the high interest higher interest rates there and then if you look at celsius they also have high interest rates voyager usually is a little bit lower on a lot of them but not all of them uh and then celsius has, has a pretty higher one uh just depending on what you want to do the only thing i like not the only thing but one of the things i like is that i can buy it on voyager and i just leave it there and then i gain interest right and that's that's what it seems pretty good to me all right, so, and as far as, oh yeah. So I, I didn't highlight this whole thing because I just wanted to talk to you real quick. As far as like DEXs, decentralized exchanges. And it talks about here about why uh, or how Voyager actually competes with decentralized exchanges. Well, first of all, uh, Uniswap, uh, the fees are outrageous. It's just how it is. Um, but there's other ones that I'm going to actually do if, I don't know when I'm going to release this video, but I'm going to do a, uh, YouTube live session over at Dan clips on my second channel. Dan clips is now going to be more of an advanced, uh, type of, uh, education platform for crypto and digital assets. And then digital asset news will just be like the basics. So I'll just do a live stream over there explaining this uh, zero x decentralized exchanges. But the big difference is, is that first of all, decentralized exchanges, uh, the fees are outrageous. Uh, zero's got got a little bit of a lockdown uh, for reduction. And second of all, if you want to do like farming and things like that, good luck telling people how to set that all up who are brand new. Some can do it, most can't. They can all do it. It's, it's not that, but it's just very complex. And again, simplicity wins, I think. Voyager, and then here's another thing that's incorrect, actually. Um, it says here, Voyager cannot go down or crash due to volume surges because it's a brokerage. Well, that, okay, that is actually true in one sense. It can't go down like Coinbase goes down. It can't go down like Kraken or a Gemini because it's a brokerage. It just goes to different, it's like the hotels.com of, you know, uh, buying crypto, right? Just find the cheaper one. The thing is, is that Voyager does go down and it has gone down in the past because of potential hacks and uh, safety issues, which I have no problem with. Every single time they've gone down, I think they've gone down like three or four times. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section. But every single time Steve comes back on and said, hey, we had an issue that uh, there was uh, some different unscrupulous people or groups that were trying to attack and uh, gain access to users' accounts. And we shut that down quickly. And that's it. And to this date, they have had... Uh, no loss of funds. So look, if you got to do that for a couple of days and I miss out on some gains or some losses, whatever, I don't really care. Just don't, don't mount gox me and uh, lose all my money. That's, that's all you got to do. That's pretty simple. And then to finish up growing pains. And this is the part I was talking about is why I was having an issue with recommending Voyager to everybody. Uh, I still use it. And then three things. First of all, uh, do I still believe in, in Voyager and their team? Yes. Do I still believe they're doing the right things? Yes. And do I still have a price prediction of the Voyager token uh, to $30 to $75? Yes, yes, yes. So nothing really changes there. It's just I need them to clean up some things before I start to, you know, start to uh, recommend them to all the different people who watch this channel. Look, on this channel, we'll get, I don't know, uh, tens of thousands of views every video, right? Sometimes I put out two a day, sometimes three a day. And there's just more people going to show up. So why would I recommend Voyager and just shove more people into their platform when they're just trying to get up to speed? I just didn't understand why I would do that. I would just let it just take my foot off the gas and be like, hey, if you still got it, I still believe in it. Just if you're new, 
and look somewhere else for a bit and uh, go from there. Anyhow, so ba -ba 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 -ba, Voyager scaling. It's created a plethora of, of scammers, and this is why we're seeing a slowdown. There's a plethora, there's a lot of scammers to enter the scene and attempt to steal Voyager's funds and customer funds. This is how they do it. They do it by faking a deposit and then withdrawing the money that Voyager gives for instant trading on deposits. So when you open up an account for Voyager, right? Immediately they're like, go ahead and trade. You know, we'll, we link to your bank, everything's good, right? But do you think the bank is really that fast? Where they're like, oh yeah, here's your funds, Voyager. No, they're slow, slow like snails. So when this happens, uh, you have to just understand that they're actually giving you this money so you can get your, your cryptocurrency. So if they're like, you know, saying, yeah, I want to just uh, uh, withdraw things. Well, nothing's really cleared, but I want my money. Well, nothing's cleared, so we can't do it. And that's just how it is. Or scammers gain access to an account by taking a customer's information or using a SIM swap attack, which Voyager then combats by manually verifying suspected withdrawals. And look, even me, I had a pretty large withdrawal come out and uh, it's five to 10 business days. And guess how long it took? 10 business days. And I'm okay with that because SIM swaps are on the rise. This was an actual tweet that I had sent out. This is from Seema. She had contacted me, uh, DM me and said, hey, I've had a real big problem with T-Mobile. Had a swim SIM swap. Lost everything, everything in my accounts. So could you, you know, let people know that T-Mobile sucks and uh, that to, to protect themselves on SIM swaps. So SIM swaps, you don't know. Some unscrupulous character will, will, will go into your, uh, your, um, um, mobile phone provider and say, Hey, I lost my phone or, you know, I, I, I have my phone, but I, I have a new phone. I need to replace the, uh, the SIM card and T-Mobile still does this. And, uh, they say, yeah, sure. You know, give us your information. Of course they're scammers. They know it. And they get a, they, they get a new, uh, they get a new SIM card. I think it's an inside job more, more often than not. But if they, if you have Google two factor authentication to where it's that little, it's a little um, app that you download. It's for Apple, it's for um, Android, and it just generates this uh, six six number code that you put in. They can't get that if you have your SIM card stolen. They like say, well, I want a new SIM card with a new phone because it's on the app. And just to prove it, this is from uh, Hacker Noon. First line defense, ditch. And this is, there's two types of two-factor authentication. There's one where you get a text message with a code and you put that in, which is irrelevant because if they have your phone, they will get you all your tech. If they have a new SIM card, they're gonna get more text messages or all your text messages. So that's, doesn't matter. But the app itself with the Google 2FA, uh, authenticator apps are not susceptible to SIM swapping. These apps rely on details unique to your physical device that cannot be transferred to another device by your phone company. This means that even if an attacker manages to take over your messages, they will not be able to duplicate your unique authentication codes or get into your accounts. There is one caveat. Uh, if they steal your phone, well, you're screwed. So uh, <laughs> if, if they do steal your phone, you know, call your provider as fast as possible. Shut that whole phone down and then give them your information and whatever else and uh, nothing, everything gets locked. So to finish this up, ba 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 and I've gotten this email as well. Many customers reach out to Voyager saying they got SIM swap attacked or had their account compromised by giving their user information to the wrong person. And currently Voyager is 75% 75, 75 scaled to be able to handle 10 million customers. Wow. And a limited onboarding of customers in a significantly more automated manner. And ah, we'll go over this. Ah, that we were over. This is just so much information. Why does it matter? Um, oh, this was the good part. Why does it matter? Why would customers leave banks for Voyager? And this is what I talked about in today's video. Voyager is launching a debit card that allows you to earn 9% interest on USDC, stablecoin, up until you swipe the card. When Voyager eventually incorporates an insurance policy on the USDC, then it's a game changer and it's game over for banks that offer debit cards with 0% interest. So imagine that. And then it says, you might think that banks will offer more interest to compete, but they can't because their infrastructure and acquisition costs are far too high. And that's the thing. And that's where I'm gonna leave it off for this one. There's some other stuff and I'm gonna link it in, in the description, but we talked about banks getting blockbustered. And when you see something like this, like, first of all, what do you do with your bank? Um, You know, you, 
you need it for transactions. You got to pay some bills. You got to do a lot of different things. But on a lot of places, you can link your debit card uh, to pay for your bills. So right there, why would I keep all my money in my bank at 0.00018% or whatever it is? Or I can get 9% interest. And then if I need to pay for something, well, here's my debit card. And then you go. Or a credit card. Credit card, you can pay, you know, like that. That way. I just, and then of course, you know, when I talk about banks doing these things, look, there was a 30% reduction in uh, physical banks in their branches over the last two years. Because first of all, they don't need them. Everybody everybody's do, does banking online and they need to cut costs. And uh, the revenue is going down. So they can't offer you those things anymore. It's just pretty impossible. So again, how are they going to compete with this? It's it's pretty uh, pretty interesting. And then the last thing, I'll just finish up with this. Um, I think if I know there's some some people out there that are like, hey, I still haven't gotten my uh, ADA transferred in, or or I still haven't had my gotten my my Bitcoin transferred out, or I'm still waiting for a transaction, whatever else. And I will say that. Over the last two, three weeks, I've received fewer and fewer and fewer complaints. That's how I gauge things, uh, just by the people that complain to me. And even people that are like, you know what, it just hasn't happened. Then they email me back, and go, okay, it does happen, just a little bit slower. So I will say that I think uh, at some point very soon, I'm going to probably start recommending them again. Because if people don't get in now to Voyager, what's going to happen down the road when, especially with the token swap that's going to happen, uh, with for the LGO to VGX token, then the utility starts to go up. Then they offer the debit card. Then they offer the credit card. Oh, and by the way, they're also going to be offering stocks. You can go cryptocurrency to stocks and purchase them that way. So Robinhood becomes irrelevant, and um, you can actually hold your crypto and just take it off uh, real crypto into your. Uh, Daedalus, not De well, Daedalus wallet and uh, Ledger and everything else. So again, I, at some point very soon, I need to start recommending so people don't get left behind. Anyhow, so that's it for the second video today. I know I went a little bit long, but there's a lot of things going on. I need to just explain exactly what it is. And just because that there's one narrative to the story, you really got to really dig deep uh, for the information because a lot of times it's not just on the shallow surface. There's a lot of things going on uh, underneath. And that's it. So if you liked the video, found uh, value, give it a thumbs up. That really help out. Uh, do, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.